Welcome to a Cult of Personality podcast. It's my pleasure today to bring you a conversation with spiritual teacher, guide, writer, um, lecturer, alchemist, mage, David Goddard. Uh, David has brought us such incredible works as The Sacred Magic of the Angels, The Tower of Alchemy, Tree of Sapphires, and The Dragon Treasure of Hermes. You can find his website at risingphoenixfoundation.org. That's risingphoenixfoundation.org. David, thank you so much for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Greg. Good to speak to you again. And it's great to speak with you again, too. Um, Before we begin, I just want to mention for listeners, you've arranged to uh, have a special uh sort of a uh, free uh, offering uh, from your website um, which people can find at www.risingphoenixfoundation.org slash interview and I'll add that link to the show notes as well so people can check that out which I would definitely encourage um, so to get into the uh, the conversation um I guess the uh, the first question I had is, uh, your work has brought a lot of esoteric and formerly what was considered very secret wisdom to the public, and if you wouldn't mind addressing the reason for that, and if there may be any implications in terms of humanity and its evolution, and, and what that might be if there are. Yes. Um, well... Firstly, I think it's important to bear in mind that uh, we stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. So some techniques that were hitherto for regarded as withdrawn are now allowed to be decimated more widely than before. But I wouldn't like to give a false impression um, to let people think that it's about some quantum leap in consciousness. Or we're all about to bounce off and become ascended masters or something. In fact, it's the other, my view is uh, the reverse of that. Um, I think we live in uh, desperate times. I think we live in dangerous times. And uh, if you, one likens that to illness, if you like, the reason these teachings are now given is because when illness is worse, we need stronger medicine. Uh, this is also the view of several um, uh, Tibetan teachers too, including the current Dalai Lama, um, and I tend to go along with that. Um, we're seeing, you know, uh, an increase in uh, the results of greed and selfishness and ignorance and fear, and real esoteric teachings are meant to be antidotes for these states of mind. And so that's why these teachers are given at this time. Mm. In other words, there's a lot of lead, so we have to get really alchemical to make a lot of gold. Indeed, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, All right. Uh, Next, um, would would you mind explaining the the origins of... uh, the traditional systems of angelic magic, that especially that you write about in your book, The Sacred Magic of the Angels. I'm curious uh, how you were introduced to it and uh, why it's so effective. Oh, yes. Well, according to tradition, um, it goes back to the temple in Jerusalem and therefore before that even to the temples of Egypt. Though there, of course, the what we call angels, they would have called the Netta, the Netaru, the gods. But it's just names. Uh, but the system was practiced in the Temple of Jerusalem. It's not very well known nowadays, but what often passes for Judaism in, in the 21st century is a very watered-down thing compared to the Temple period. Uh, Judaism had a kind of reformation at the end of the Babylonian captivity where Ezra um, put most of the emphasis upon uh, the text, the Torah, Mm -hmm. and upon the lawgiver, Moses. 
But in the temple period, the chief figure, you could say the cult hero, to use a mythological term, uh, was uh, the prophet Enoch. And as many listeners probably know, in Kabbalistic tradition, Enoch um, doesn't taste death. He rises up to the heavens and becomes transfigured into the archangel Metatron, the archangel Keta, the first sphere and the tree of life. And he even receives the title of the Lesser Tetragrammaton, the Lesser Yahweh, the little God, or God the Son, you could say. Mm. And the temple cult was built around this. This is where you can see the inheritance from the ancient mysteries of Egypt, what's technically called theosis, by which a human becomes divine. Mm -hmm. And the workings of the temple as those in the other mystery cults, was to make that real, was to make that become so, as they say in Star Trek. Make it so, make it happen. And really, even to this day, the whole purpose of the rituals, the meditations, the path workings, all the spiritual tools we use are to increase that level of awareness. Well, and we know, for example, that... um, some of uh, Jesus' disciples were members of the high priestly family, which by that point was a rather large clan, and that the teachings regarding Enoch were considered, were considered um, uh, amongst the most sacred. The, the way it goes is that while Enoch was on earth, he would do these journeys to the upper worlds. His guide would be Archangel Uriel. Mm. And this Archangel would, basically, he'd be taking Enoch around the inner worlds and introducing him to who's who. Which, so in other words, which angel rules which issue, which planet, which season. Um, even a, a modern biblical authority has says that the book of Enoch is the most complete piece of angelic communication and by the way when I say the book of Enoch I'm talking about the one from the Apocrypha I'm not talking about the the new age one with the white leather case and right um, but this was considered incredibly important in, in the old temple in Jerusalem there were even to use a modern word chapels for the seven archangels as well as a pillar for Shekinah the, the cult itself was much closer to what we would nowadays call Byzantine Christianity or Roman Catholicism. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of bells and smells. <laughs> but the inner workings, you know, the mercy seat, the ark, was for ascension into the upper worlds. Well, this repository of knowledge was the basis of the magic of light, the theurgy of the temple period. And they referred to it by a term which, sadly, many fundamentalists have now hijacked, where it's referred to as the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Meaning, who's who? Which angel rules which it issues? And this passed down into the church. Even even in 300 